Hi guys, welcome to the Vox. Hey. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. Are you ready to impress our the Vox audience three times during one speech? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, yes, we are yes. definitely ready. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Great. So right, enjoy your time. I see Otavio got a Disney related t-shirt, even though it's not Marvel, but it's close. <laughs> okay, yeah. guys, you can start. Not enjoy your work. time on DevOx. Great. Cool. So first of all, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. we do. Great, cool. Thanks a lot, gents. So, it's about time, right? We're going to talk about the NoSQL endgame. Of course, uh, we are with the three of us, and uh, the information we have to share is quite some, and the time is quite limited. So, uh, with no further delay, let's quickly meet. Werner, first of all, who are you? Yeah, yeah. I, I have my own company, my own company. with clients. clients. Across the, across the world. world. I'm also I'm the Jakarta EE um, specification committee, committee representative, representative for committers. And, and I'm, I'm leading various other open source, open source projects or JSRs, JSRs including, including units of units measurement of money. money. OK, that's cool. Uh, a bit uh, of. Uh, introduction about myself as well, Thodoris Bais, or Thodoris Bais in English, originally from Greece, living and working in the Netherlands for the last five years as a Scrum Master for the ABN Amro Bank for the last two years. I'm also the founder and leader of the Utrecht Java User Group and uh, really looking forward uh, to this talk today to share information and to see what and how we can get the best out of it. Otavio, what about you? Hello, hello, everybody. That's amazing to be here. My name is Otavio Santana. I'm from Brazil. Um, right now, I'm Dev Hell Engineer from Platform SH. Platform SH is a cloud company who provides an easy way to you take your application, move to cloud. Therefore, we don't need to worry about the huge complexity to hand about cloud, such as security, uh, this kind of details. I'm Jakarta E member. I'm also JCP executive member, and again, that's amazing to be here to talk about NoSQL. Yeah, right. So before diving into uh, the actual presentation, I also have one marketing slide. It will be the only marketing slide. So as I mentioned, I work as a Scrum Master for the ABN Amro Bank, and nowadays we are moving towards a future-proof and sustainable bank. So uh, in case you're interested in any kind of openings, vacancies, development opportunities, feel free to reach out to me or check uh, our website. Now, enough about it, just on marketing slide. We're not about marketing here though. It is 2020, right? And it was quite a year, I would say. So let's start by having a look at the five main trends of 2020. First of all, Nowadays, more customers are going online, right? Which means that, uh, which brings us, actually, brings us actually to the second trend, which is that uh, the internet is nowadays connecting everything. A third trend is also that big data is getting bigger and bigger. Fourth trend, apps are moving to the cloud. And we will see more about it later on. And fifth, and most important trend nowadays is that the world has gone mobile. Okay, cool. What does this mean though for us and the reason we are here today? It basically means that new digital trends create new technical challenges. So I'm pretty sure you might be already wondering what are those technical challenges exactly? First challenge is, of course, to develop with agility, right? Second of all, we need to operate at any scale. And third, to deliver the performance and availability required to meet the demands of digital economy businesses. Okay, 
we slowly start unveiling the entire NoSQL thingy, right? So what are those advantages that NoSQL brings us today? Once again, and first of all, NoSQL can handle large volumes of data at high speed with a scale-out architecture. One of my favorite ones, though, it is that it can store unstructured, semi-structured, or structured data as well. Werner will tell you more about it as uh, we start looking more, or as we start delving into the actual NoSQL thingy and how it works. Third advantage of NoSQL databases is that it enables easy updates to schemas and fields. And fourth, and most important one, it is that it is quite developer friendly, which is what we want nowadays, right? So that was it, right? No, I do have a fifth one as well. It is that they take full advantage of the cloud to deliver zero downtime. Okay, so we started with having a look at the main trends of 2020. We touched a bit upon no SQL databases, but what is the rationale behind this talk? Why are we here today with the three of us trying to cover such a topic? First of all, the JVM can cope with heavy loads, right? And of course, there are quite some persistent, per, persistent frameworks for J Java persistent frameworks for the NoSQL databases out there. However, here comes the question. Which one of them performs best for your case? Now, it would normally take is for you to compare all those Java persistent frameworks against the different NoSQL databases. So we did it for you, and that, that's why we are here today. That was the introductory part and the, the rationale behind this talk. So Werner will now take you further or will take you to the beautiful world of NoSQL databases, how they work, how, how they operate, and so on. And with that, Werner, it's over to you, and I will stop sharing my screen for that for now. Yes. yes, so, so what are non -local non -local data is about? about? They usually, usually don't, don't have, have uh, a unified structure. There are no transactions. You have the, the base, base principle. principle. And, and there, there are at are least, least four, four major, major types. First of all, there's key value. With examples like the Amazon solutions, Redis or Hazelcast. Then there are column oriented, which are a little closer to what you might know from traditional relational databases like HBase or Cassandra. Document stores that use a document format like uh, JSON or XML. For example, Apache CouchDB, MongoDB or CouchBase. Then we have graph-based systems like Neo4g or Hypergraph. These are, of course, more sophisticated because they allow relationships uh, not only between two tables, but between multiple objects. We're going to see that in our examples, how that can be used as an advantage. And then there are the shape shifters, if you want, uh, that cover more than one for example, OrientDB supports both graph and document. Couchbase, in addition to document, also allows to use key value and a few others that sometimes allow to use up to three different uh, types, even in the same application. The key principles and terms in SQL are table, row, column, or relationship. In key value, there's a bucket. And of course, the key value pair. Column-based also have the column. That's probably the 
main similarity with uh, SQL. And documents have a collection, documents, again, a key value pair and links to other documents. It's a bit like uh, hypertext or the World Wide Web. And in graph, you have a vertex and an edge or also nodes in some cases. The two principles of base and acid are basically available, soft state and eventual consistency, while acid stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Now let's look at some popular systems from the CAP perspective. Again, consistency, availability, and partial tolerance. And here you see that there's an overlap while some of the systems go more in one or the other direction. The same with scalability versus complexity. Key value systems uh, can be very scalable, while graph-based systems are usually the most complex ones because they offer additional types of relationships and graphs that the others don't. In a relational database system, you usually have the logic tier then a data access object, then a layer like JPA, and different JDBC drivers underneath. With NoSQL, that's of course uh, way different because each of them have their own APIs that may often be not compatible with each other. So when you switch from one system to another or you want to support multiple, then you will often need to have N different APIs that also work differently and have an extra learning curve for your developers. So we compare four major frameworks, Spring with Spring Data, Micronaut, where we'll come to that, uh, Micronaut data does not fully support NoSQL yet. Uh, Jakarta NoSQL and its implementation chain NoSQL and Hibernate. Under Micronaut, we also look at GORM, which can be used uh, in multiple different containers. And for the sake of simplicity, we're only going to look at Neo4j, MongoDB, and way quickly with Jakarta NoSQL, also Hazelcast. Uh, here are some of the others, but uh, because we have three speakers and not so much time, that's why we are going to cut it a little short and not show all of them. But uh, in our demo repository, you will also see examples uh, for many major NoSQL systems. So while JPA works pretty well for relational databases, there are some problems for NoSQL. Asynchronous access and callback, time to live, the level of consistency, uh, it's very SQL-like, while in NoSQL you have a large diversity with sometimes even different types of uh, query languages. What most of these frameworks have in common, although they sometimes have slightly different names, is annotated entities with an annotation like entity, or in some cases you may also see others like node uh, for graph databases. Then annotations for columns or fields, Most of them support the template pattern. Here's an example for a document template. As well as the repository pattern. Here again from Spring Data, but 
most of the other systems, especially Jakarta NoSQL, also support them in a very similar way. Both Spring and Jakarta NoSQL use a dependency injection mechanism. Uh, here you have the Jakarta inject framework and spec, which actually also works underneath the hood in Spring. So you, you could use at inject, although Spring has its own flavors of annotations, uh, but most of them are pretty compatible with at inject. And then the specific annotations like database. One of them for the type of column based and the other one for key value. The repository pattern also allows to inject and embed queries. And there's diversity by supporting sp specific annotations. Here we have two examples for annotations that are specific to Cassandra, while the other ones are general purpose and therefore also interchangeable between different systems. We allow query by text for selects that are closer to, for example, uh, direct uh, native queries in JPA. And I will show all the live demos together so I don't have to switch back and forth too often. So the next candidate and contender is Micronaut. As mentioned, uh, Micronaut also has Micronaut data. It's very much inspired by GORM, which we're going to see next. In fact, it's actually driven by the same offers. In Micronaut, there's a repository, although it doesn't have to be annotated uh, in some cases uh, because it's not yet supporting Micronaut data together with NoSQL. So some of that may change uh, as soon as Micronaut data also supports NoSQL. At the moment, you have to do it uh, with the lower level APIs for each individual system. Here, the same goes for the entity. So you can pretty much use a portal. And that's query by text. In this case, the example is for Neo4j. And then there's GORM. So GORM uh, comes from the Groovy and Grails world. It was created uh, by mostly the same authors who also contribute to Micronaut. And with GORM, it's a little similar. Uh, it has various uh, supports for different systems. including several NoSQL databases. The entity here again is annotated, so it's a little closer to the others. There's no real uh, repository, uh, so we'll show th that in the demo uh, that GORM, a little similar to what Todoris is going to show you in Spring Data, uh, it has a stronger focus on the controller where a lot of the querying is actually done in the controller. So, so now let's look at the code. We have a couple of very quick examples for Jakarta NoSQL. 
first uh, a repository for a user with the Hazelcast system. So these are in memory, that's why they usually work pretty fast. In some of them, you don't even need the actual system involved because they're embedded through Tinkerpop. In others, you will have to install, for example, MongoDB. So here, the, the black text is the actual query. Uh, the rest is uh, some metadata by Hazelcast itself. And the same application with a template is actually way similar. You see, there's almost no difference except that you have a key value template instead of a repository. I won't run, run that now because uh, it will take a little too much time. But let's run a MongoDB example. I can only see the slides still, not the screen, not your ID. Oh, oh so, who, so who's, who's, who's sharing? sharing? Maybe someone from the organization can help? Or maybe, Werner, you can reshare uh, your ID? Yes. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, it looks like uh, it was actually Octavio's screen or somebody else's screen, or maybe they they did the swapping. So let's go back to the repository because we couldn't see it first. So here we have the repository example using a repository approach and the repository pattern with Hazelcast. The same with a template. And to save a little time, uh, I already run the next one. So here's the same with the repository as well as template for MongoDB. And you see there's almost no different way, simple examples. So you can use either one. And here we see the, the query of uh, inserting some God objects and entities and creating relationships between them and then running the query. And after we delete them, the query shows no results. And one more. Or a type of database is the graph database, which actually looks a little different because you can do fluid queries and also use lambdas here, for example. And since the relationships in the graph database are more sophisticated and can basically be n end to end between lots of different elements. That means, of course, the code is a little different. And the API here also offers some more options. So here are the examples for some of the main Avenger characters and Iron Man characters uh, traveling around the world. Let's stay in the IDE. And as promised, I will show you the controller. You already saw the entity using GORM 
on the slide. So here's the controller, and you see that uh, a lot of the magic uh, is actually happening in the controller, including uh, there's a transactional annotation and also the actual operations like uh, get all users or get a particular user. This happens very much in the controller. So for Neo4j, uh, because the relationships in the graph database are different, let me quickly show you some of these objects. So we had the cities that I actually used in more than one example. We will also see them in Micronaut. But I will show that in in Postman so you can see the results. And here are the relationships between the different gods in the god example. For example, you see that Thor is the father of Magni, but the stepfather of the hunting god Ullur. And Odin is Thor's father. So you could also have additional relationships if you want, like for example, Odin being the grandfather of Magni and Magni being the grandson of Odin. Uh, that would make the graph a little more complex, but uh, I guess you get the idea how you could use that even more extensively than in this example. And here we have the travelers from the travel example that you just saw. So in the GORM example using MongoDB. Most of those are already prepared. So here you see the list of all users. I won't add yet another user, but I added this user uh, the other day. And you see that there are two users. And if you want to show just one user by user ID, then you get a particular user. We won't uh, cover the others because that would take a little too much time. Now the God example in the MongoDB database variant also shows you all the gods that exist, their number. And now here we see all the gods. Uh, the only reason why uh, some of them are duplicated is because th the database is shared between two, two different examples. So we inserted uh, some like Tor and Ulur also from Jakarta NoSQL, and they already existed from the Micronaut example. That's why you see some of those uh, as duplicates here. And then over to our Last uh, Micronaut example with Neo4j, you again see all the cities. Six, as you see them here. We get a particular city by name, like New York. And again, uh, we'll, we'll skip the rest. Uh, so so Doris also still has a little more time to show you how this can be done with Spring Data. So over to you. Yes, sure. Thank, thanks a lot. So with that, let's get back to the presentation, first of all, right? So let me start by sharing my screen so we can do this properly. One, two, three, yes. And I hope we are back to the presentation also in our view and you can see it. So we've seen uh, quite some good examples from uh, Werner, right? Now let's have a look at uh, the Spring Data, right? Uh, we will see Spring Data against both MongoDB and Neo4j. So let's start with MongoDB. We distinguish 
two main parts here logistics and domain of course nothing super crazy no rocket science here just the very basic dependency of uh, for mongodb with spring boot starter and of course some configuration properties for uh, to which database the application should connect to using which port as well so this should be our logistics nothing that crazy right what about the domain let's get to the right column now so in the domain we only need to annotate our model class with the annotation document right at document and of course we need to point to which particular collection the model should be connected to in this particular case i'm still using the guard examples and i'm pointing this model class to look at the collection having the name gods we will see more in the code as well now what about uh, the repository the repository here for mongodb needs to only ex extend the mongo repository right which is of course of a specific type we will see it once again in the code what about the controller though so this one is a hint because i would really like this to, sh to see it together i would really like you to have a look with me how different or how not that different how easy it is co to configure a controller for the mongo db for spring data so two things so far document annotation and just extending the mongo repository to framework specific uh, things we should keep in mind about the mongodb connection what about our neo 4 j and for the sake of time and to also prevent of course uh, quite some back and forth between presentation mode and code mode i will show both neo 4 j and mongodb and then we can go directly to some code examples so Neo4j, if uh, you're not already aware of it, comes out of the box together with a basic movies example. So once you're able to download Neo, the Neo4j database, you get a basic and quite rich, I would say, uh, movies database example. In this particular case, of course, we have uh, two entities, the movie entity and the person entity. And what can we see here? is of course some connections some relationships between the two entities so for example in the movie forest gump how, how could we read this right in the movie forest gump we can say that person entity tom hanks acted in it and of course the movie forest gump was directed by robert zemeckis now what about the logistics and domain of neo4j once again no rocket science today so for our particular examples we used some reactive flavor of the spring boot starter dependency just to make our life easier also for the sake of time and of course once again the dependencies are quite straightforward right neo4j database needs to run on top of both and of course additionally we need to configure username and password nothing crazy what is it so for the domain we need to cater for our movie entity our movie repository also a secondary entity here because we are having graphs so there must be some relationships between the different entities right and what does having relationships between the different entities mean it means that we need to cater for some roles as well right so in terms of the repository just like we did or, or just like we could do for the mongodb configuration we just need to extend the corresponding one for neo4j in this particular case the reactive neo4j repository class and of course some framework specific or some reactive specific so to say mono entities in order to properly deal with the repository what about the entity configuration in neo4j everything is a node or to put it better our models should be our model classes should be annotated with a node 
annotation. So for our person entity, we should have a node at node person, right? Of course, some properties here, and same goes for our movie entity. Some properties, and then what do we see in, in the very bottom? We do see some relationship annotations, right? Exactly just like we've already said for both entities. There is some connection between the person and the movie, so we need to properly deal with that or cope with that in the code as well. So this is now possible using the relationship annotation and with a type acted and of course direction incoming. It always depends on your particular case. And of course, as we said, a fourth class is needed here, the class for roles, which we need to annotate with relationship properties annotation and no rocket science here either. Now, enough about uh, the slides, let's have a look at some code, right? Before having the look at the code, and I hope my screen is still visible, and you can now see this graph with the movies database, Neo4j database comes out of the box with, here is just how it looks like once uh, you start the Neo4j databases, database. Uh, you have the movies entity and the person's entity, and of course your movies database or your movies graph databases, database should look like this. Now, before doing uh, some, before performing some requests back and forth using, of course, our uh, postman as Werner showed us, let's have a quick look at the MongoDB example, as we said. What I'm going to show here is not what we've seen in the slides so far. I just want to quickly point out the most important topics once again. Document annotation for our model class. Then in our repository, we just need to extend the Mongo repository. And remember what I said? How does our controller look like? I don't see any framework specific annotations, do I? Of course not. So configuring your REST controller, in this particular case for MongoDB, with Spring Data, of course, is quite straightforward. There is no magic added here. Everything comes out of the box and you can go around it the same way you're used to deal with REST controllers. So let's perform a couple of requests. Of course, my database is already set up. So by performing uh, a request to get all available gods, I can see a good overview. Of course, every god should have a name and a power. I'm using the Greek uh, gods, guess why. Um, so, different request, get all gods by name. So what did we do here? We configured our query to return all the gods, which name starts with her. In this particular case, Hira let's say and of course get god by id uh, for uh, this particular id we do have some solido in the system so let's say i want to delete sally from the system i will paste this url and then i should see this entry being removed here right and what about adding a god of course that should be quite straightforward straightforward as well. In this particular case, I do have some uh, ready, something ready. So uh, let's add Hercules, who has, of course, power, the power of strength. Let's directly add him. And uh, that triggers me actually that if I fire this request again, I should get two entries, right? Yes, because now once again we are requesting the database to return all the available gods whose name is starting with the prefix her so both Hera, Hera and hercules now enough about it uh let's directly delete all gods because that would mean 
we are slowly wrapping it up for the MongoDB example. And yes, there is nothing else left here. The update got by ID, you can see it uh, also in our GitHub repository. Let's quickly go through our Neo4j examples, right? API and domain. Let's start with the domain. Movie entity, as we said, everything in Neo4j, because it is a graph database, everything is a node when it comes to model classes. So some basic uh, annotation here, some basic node annotation here, the relationship, as we said, and same goes for our person. Uh, model class, annotation node, some properties, no further rocket science here. In our repository, I repeat it once again, the only thing we need to do is to extend the reactive Neo4j repository and our roles. The magic, the thing I wanted to show you once again, our controller, right? And I give you a moment to have a look at the controller. Once again, nothing specific, nothing framework specific needs to be configured for Neo4j either. So everything comes out of the box for you and everything can still be configured the way we are used to configure our REST controllers. And with that, let's also have a quick look at uh, two or three basic examples here. Uh, both of my examples are running here, as you can see below, uh, both my Spring Boot uh, Data Neo4j and my uh, Spring Boot Data MongoDB are running, and you can find all the examples in our GitHub repository. Octavio will share the links later on. So, very typical, a very normal request, right? How to get all movies? By just doing this movies, by just uh, firing this movies uh, example, right? This movies query. And what do we have? We have around this many movies. Now let's say I want to get a particular movie. So I'm going to request by title with title, title equals the matrix. And of course, so we can see something uh, more easy to understand and more readable, of course. Title, description, actors and roles is of course a nested JSON, JSON here with directors as we've seen. And let's say I want to delete the very last movie, which is a leg of their own, right? So a leg of their own is a delete query here in our beloved Postman tool. I'm firing the, the query and what I should be getting from the get all movies query is one movie less. So that could be all for both Neo4j and MongoDB uh, using databases, sorry, using Spring Data, quite straightforward, just a couple of uh, specific annotations for a couple of framework specific annotations for configuring our um, back and forth, our persistence frameworks, our back and forth for the queries. And of course, our controller, I want to stress this once again, our, our controller needs no framework specific configuration. It is just a REST related configuration. With that, I will hand it over to Otavio, who will tell you more about Hibernate. I don't think that we have enough time, so let's go to the conclusion. So, uh, Tador, do you mind if you go to the last slide just to share the links? Can also happen. Uh, but first of all, uh, organization, uh, do we have maybe five minutes before we wrap it up? Okay, feel free uh, to directly go to the links if uh, we exceeded the time. I feel uh, we also started a bit later, but yes. So let's go to the conclusions. Uh, here you go. We have a couple of conclusions here, but don't worry, we're going to share the link with more information about the uh, that comparison. But basically, if you want to know and go deep uh, to get more details and 
try by yourself, right? So go to the GitHub repository. So go to JNoSQL organization slash NoSQL endgame, where you can take the sample, take a look, uh, and compare for sure to see each one fits better in your case. Because when you talk about NoSQL no frameworks, we need to understand that any framework has your home strategy to handle that kind of solution. For example, Hibernate wants to use the same JPA annotation, the same JPA AP, uh, interface to handle with NoSQL database. And that, for sure, has several trade-offs. So go there and take a look. Um, if you want to know more about GenoSQL, we have the website genosql.org. Uh, the credits, and that's it. So thank you. That was. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Vener Todors, to be here and share about a lot of knowledge about NoSQL database. Great. Thanks a lot, everyone. And uh, if there are any questions, please reach out to us uh, on Twitter or LinkedIn. We will share the presentation afterwards. Yeah. yeah, thank you, guys. So please go to a Zoom Q&A room, and there you can continue your communication with your participants and discuss all the topics right here. Thank you.